welcome to episode 4 of What Makes the Eastern Free State Lacquer. In this episode, I visit the beautiful town of Voorhiesburg as well as the area around it known as the Brandwaterkom. I personally think that this specific area is the most beautiful area in South Africa and I invite you to sit back, relax and enjoy the next 30 minutes with me. I only feature some of the venues in this episode and hope to show you more of the other great places that this region has to offer in future episodes. From Sionekal where I live it is a 60 minute drive to Friesburg via Bethlehem. The road is in fairly good condition and the drive is pleasant. Friesburg was founded in 1892 and like most eastern free state towns have many sandstone houses and buildings. The Dutch Reformed Church is well maintained with beautiful gardens. I stayed at the Furiesburg Country Inn, a beautiful four-star hotel with fantastic atmosphere, owned by Gilly and Renee Skeepers, who are also prominent farmers in the district. My room's in a separate sandstone house. Stunning room, I'll go show you now what it looks like. I arrived here quite late in the afternoon. There was a very heavy rain shower earlier, so everything is fresh from the rain. It's nice and quiet, peaceful. Um, you can't beat the free state evenings. I mean, it's just absolutely amazing. Everywhere in the high felt, the evenings are just stunning. No wind, beautiful temperature. I could not wait to have dinner at one of my favorite places. The Windmill Pub and Grill. Absolutely amazing. You can choose between going with Johnny Walker or Jack Daniels. I'm a little bit more of a Jack fan than a Johnny fan. Great food, great place. Let's go inside and see what it looks like. I played three seasons of cricket in England and love the old English pubs. The Windmill Pub and Grill has the same old English atmosphere and you cannot beat the food here. This rum steak with veggies only cost me 120 rand and I'm yet to eat better steak than good free state beef. The next morning I'm up early and after a strong cup of coffee on the stoop I had a breakfast at the Furiesburg Country Inn. Apart from the restaurant, the Furiesburg Country Inn also offers a lacquer ladies bar. A wine cellar. A courtyard. A larpa that is big enough for functions. And a variety of rooms, ranging from single rooms to family rooms. And of course, the luxurious rooms where I was privileged to stay. Nadat ek heerlijke bolton gekoop het, ontmoet ek die eienaar van die Windmill Pub and Grill, Nielis Roos, wat gaaf genoeg is om my te vat om die watertonnels te sien. Iets waarvan ek nie eers geweet het, tot een paar weke gelede nie. I'm constantly amazed at the driving skills of the free status. Nielis never even stopped talking while driving over some seriously rough 4x4 terrain. These water tunnels are wonderfully hidden away when you pass by and you would never guess what lays beneath you. That is why many Boer women and children decided to hide here from the English soldiers during the Anglo-Boer War. They remained hidden for about two years until some English soldiers rode by on horseback and smelled the coffee that the ladies made beneath. Unfortunately, this meant the capture of the women and children and they were carted off to a concentration camp along with so many other women and children. Hier waar al die klippele was, die was een ou Ossewaal brug wat die boe oor gegaan het. Nou ongelukkig met al die reen het het die ingeval onlangs en so die brug is nou nie meer daar nie. Maar ongelooflik, joh, weet jy wat vir my amazing is, is dat ek het in die vrystaat groot geword en ek het eerst een week of twee weke gelede uitgevind van van hierdie watertonnels. Dit is ongelooflik. That's not anything what you must see. This really is something you absolutely have to see. It's a, a bit of a rough road to get here, so you definitely need a good 4x4. Or you walk, it's not so far. It can be a nice hike. 
but absolutely amazing. Yeah, this is just wow, wow, wow. And it feels like you're in a, in a different world. It feels like you've time traveled and you're in a movie. And incredible. On our way back, we stop at the Furiesburg Dam. Ah, so this is the Furiesburg Dam. They get their municipal water from here. Beautiful. It's not the biggest surface, but it's an incredibly deep dam. Um, beautiful mountain water coming down here. And for someone like me who's not too fond of heights, that's a little bit scary looking down here. That's a big on the bomb in here. That side looks okay. That side is a bit high. So you walk here, you don't look down. That's one of those things. Beautiful, it's worth, worth seeing. Then I bid Nealis farewell and make my way to the other place. And again, the, the nature and the beauty of the whole scenery and everything is just magnificent. Oh, it's just so beautiful. You know, I think with a lot of work pressure, city noise and the rat race and everything, if you get out here, I think it's just a wonderful way to unwind and refresh again. Just smell the country air, green grass, everything around you is really just absolutely fantastic. Yeah, I'm going to be about 20 minutes late for my appointment here at the other place. And and I can safely say that it wasn't my fault. It's really got to do with the hosp hospitality of the Eastern Free State. You know, people are so friendly wherever you walk in Friesburg or, or all around the Eastern Free State. People are just so friendly and they want to talk to you. <laughs> so I'm slightly late. The owner, Winnet McKenzie, is a real character and he was waiting for me in his own Free State style Uber. We had so lekker gesels that I toen nog later was for my other afspraken. How beautiful is the view from this restaurant? Winnet has a large collection of pipes and miniature vehicles. Winnet and Yvette sell many different products, but their collection of goat's cheese and yogurts are amazing. And of course, they pour your liquor from an udder. <laughs> so you have to smell this room. It's where they sell all the soaps and variety of other products that they make here. But it's absolutely beautiful scent when you walk in here. It makes you want to use this stuff. In fact, some of these soaps are so beautiful, you actually want to eat it. If you don't really know that it's soap, I don't think you should eat it. But it's absolutely amazing. You must have this place here, and it's absolutely wonderful. Another place that you really have to go when you're in the Oost Freistad, because this is very, very, very lekker. After a quick visit to their distillery, I was off to the next venue. I took guest farm. This game farm is a very popular camping and recreation destination with excellent facilities and beautiful views. Activities include hikes, abseiling, zip lining, fishing, game drives and rock climbing. They also have a few comfortable cottages with this amazing view. By now I was more than ready for some good coffee that I got at the Orange Apple Country Shop and Snack Shack. Kathy is the friendly owner and host.
as I drove away from the orange apple, my thoughts were, what a lack of place. Then I drove towards Fixburg until I got to the Ionia cherry farm. Another one of my favorite places in the Free State. Ionia is owned by the same owners of the Friesburg Country Inn, Gilly and Renee Skippers. I start my visit here by tasting the cherry liqueur. <laughs> There's only one really big problem with this cherry liqueur as you want to drink more and more and more. Absolutely beautiful. So nice. This one's called Ionia Cherry Liqueur Gold. And the problem with this one as well is that you're going to have to drink both of them. You can't just drink one of them. They're both amazing. I've been here often before and always stand amazed at their variety of different cherry products. The coffee any cozy so I saw my lacquer. It is my first visit to Ionia since the completion of their new function venue called The Cave. It is a truly remarkable venue, including a stage and it can host over a thousand people. This farm has become the main venue of the annual Cherry Festival of Fixburg. Due to the heavy rains of the previous few days, I had to take a slight detour to visit my next venue, Polo Africa, situated high on top of the Witteberge. And this is one of the best polo fields in South Africa. Not just because it's so incredibly picturesque, but because of the surface made from a very durable grass. Just insane, isn't it? A lot of children come here um, they, they've got a passion here to teach the children, so a lot of them come here spend time in summertime. It is wonderful to see the passion that Catherine Kearns has for polo and also to equip children from all different backgrounds. This facility on the farm provides accommodation, dining and recreational options for the children. Polo Africa also offers accommodation in this beautiful old sandstone house. A little further up the hill is another accommodation option in this wonderfully offbeat cottage. Then I travel to Werania Guest Farm, situated halfway between Furiesburg and Clarence. Werania Guest Farm is one of the most beautiful and amazing wedding venues that I have ever seen. So, let's start with the bridal suite. How would you like to shower in this outdoor shower? under these majestic sandstone cliffs with a waterfall that runs from the top of the mountain. Of course it has all the bells and whistles but what about this view? Down below you can see the indoor swimming pool where a group of guests from Bloemfontein checked in just before I arrived and it happened to be a school friend of mine whose son was getting married the next day. You can choose from a variety of accommodation options like this cottage
or a slightly bigger version. Or the rooms at the main house. or this sandstone cottage. And then of course they also have a second option for a bridal suite. Like all great wedding venues, they need to have an extraordinary chapel. In their case, the chapel has glass walls so that the guests can enjoy the majestic mountains while listening to the wedding bells. And then off to the amazing functions hall. Of course, you can book Wiranya Guest Farm for any kind of function, not just weddings. From one absolutely amazing farm to another, Le Sobar Guest Farm is a peaceful, magnificently picturesque farm. That is, if you don't decide to dive off one of the sandstone cliffs in the most dangerous sport that exists, base jumping. Luister net hoe mooi en rustig is die klanke van die natuur op hierdie prachtige plaas. JL and Roulet Mons are the friendly owners. Their accommodation is available in these cottages situated next to the dam. They also cater for weddings, functions and holidays and if you're up for some adventure they offer hiking and mountain bike trails, bushman paintings, dinosaur fossils, fishing and swimming. From Lesorba I drive back to Furiesburg and then turn off towards the Lesotho border, situated right on the Caledon River that forms the border between South Africa and Lesotho is Camel Rock, named after the camel-like rock formation. This beautiful farm offers accommodation in a variety of cottages. Or, if you enjoy camping, they've also got great camping facilities or you can choose rooms to stay in the main building. Camel Rock also offers hiking, mountain bike trails and 4x4 routes. By now I'm starving and really looking forward to a meal at the Place du Restaurant. The Place du Pet a fantastic atmosphere.
The rules are simple. If you ring the bell, you have to buy a round for everyone seated at the bar. Well, the bell rang a few times during my visit here, but I still managed to rise early enough the next morning to ready myself for a cycling ride that I've been wanting to do ever since I arrived in the Eastern Free State over a year ago. I only share the highlights in this episode, but a more comprehensive video about this cycling route will be available on my YouTube channel soon. After a few rolling hills, I ascend Surrender Hill, which takes me to 1,900 meters above sea level. The name dates back to July 1900, when the British Army defeated the Boers here during the Anglo-Boer War and some 4,300 Boer men surrendered. The view from Surrender Hill is magnificent and the mountains of Lesotho are visible in the background. From here it's a long downhill and a few rollers until you turn right at Clarence towards Golden Gate. You have to purchase a permit at the tourist office if you want to turn off from the main road, which is what I intend to do today. There is a small collection of photographs here explaining the history and fauna and flora of the region. The first people group to live here were the Khoisan, or also known as Bushmen. Lots of dinosaur fossils have been found in the Greater Eastern Free State region, including the Golden Gate area. I will feature the Golden Gate National Park in more detail in a future episode. From here I turn away from the main road and into the higher mountains. So this is at the start of the climb. Already in my lightest gear and a long way to go. Plenty of switchbacks getting up this mountain. Look here. Amazing view. Beautiful tar road. No potholes. Pretty narrow. But then again, it's a one way. So cars only travel in one direction, so it's fine. Absolutely amazing. And if you cycle here, I'm pretty sure a car's not gonna hit you. You might get run over by a wildebeest or we are to be as Maybe the odd ostrich. Uh, if you really don't make it to the top by cycling and you pass out here, you gotta watch out because they, they protect the vultures up here. There's a vulture feeding station. So if you go up here too slowly, they might pick you up. A bit more climbing to go. That little section felt like it was above 12%. Could have been 50. I don't have my Garmin on me, so I'm dependent on Strava today. But I have to see afterwards. Look at this gorgeous black willow beers running down at the bottom. I want to say something, but there's no oxygen left. That was steep. Boy, oh boy. Okay. I made it to the top again. Enough climbing for one day. Now we gotta find some coffee. Some good, good coffee. And I know just the place. It's got a red bus waiting for me. Absolutely worth the cycle and stopping at the bus stop. Really amazing stop between Clarence and Golden Gate. I've been here a few times with friends and family. It's never disappointed me. They've also got a fully licensed, fully licensed facility, so you can purchase a few other drinks as well and nice food. Oh, 
after the lacquer cup of coffee at the bus stop, I drive to the party town of the Eastern Free State, namely Clarence. I will feature Clarence in a future episode, but for now I just have to mention the beautiful bed and breakfast that I stayed in called the Honeysuckle. My unit had two beautiful ensuite rooms with a comfortable lounge and kitchenette. As well as a stoop where I had breakfast the next morning. Until the next episode of What Makes the Eastern Free State Lekker, tot ziens, sala hantli, and goodbye. And here is a small foretaste of my time in Clarence that started at a live show by Rudo Schwimm at the Grouse and Claret. Shoot!